this is the soft top convertible hood for the Triumph TR6. This has been manufactured in black PVC Everflex. We can also offer it in deluxe mohair canvas, DMC, not to be confused with SMC, which is Stay Fast, which a lot of other people out there offer as standard. Deluxe mohair canvas is the premium version. Um, uh, so it's a quality level higher, shall we say, than the Stay Fast. So just bear that in mind when comparing apples with apples. I'm gonna do this video in two parts, so it allows me to uh, flip the hood over and show you the underside, which is quite important on these. But starting on the top side, you've got the three window set up as per original spec for a lot of the Triumphs. And for the PVC versions, it was HFRF welded in place, as you can see. For the DMC versions, you have to stitch it. Uh, unique to the TR6s was the element of this central window being able to zip and flap down. You can barely see the zip there, but on the underside uh, video, um, uh, later on in this video, you'll, you'll be able to see it a lot clearer. It's edged all the way around, apart from on the very front edge, which I'll show you in a second. And that allows for the reinforcement underneath there, which allows for some of the hood studs to secure it in place. Again, I'll go into a bit more detail on that in a second. You have the left to right stitch formations that allow the water to run down towards the back of it there, as you can see. You have the side channels here, which again directs water so that it doesn't drip into the car or at least tries to avoid it. And then you have this section of the B post around the rear of the door and window closing there. You'll notice this front edge, like I said, earlier isn't edged and you've got the white marks on there it's basically excess material there which allows you to wrap it around the header rail section of the hood and screw it in place basically the tr6s and the tr5s they use the setup where you uh, sort of wrapped it around and then that header rail was secured into place on the windscreen frame using those uh, lever handles as it were uh, so just bear that in mind uh, so yeah, in terms of the top side of the hood, that's it. Uh, check back in a second for the rest of it, TB. Right, I'm back. So this is the underside of the TR6 hood. So as you can see, it's got in the center here, the flap sewn on with the studs that allow you to clip it together. And that obviously wraps around the one of the rails that goes from left to right on the hood frame area. Obviously the undone edge of the front with the head rail as I described before. Now you've also got the Velcro on these side channels here and that is to allow for on the TR5, TR250 and TR6s the actual hood frame metalwork itself had a U-shaped channel which had uh, elements of Velcros and seals attached to it so obviously this is the Velcro that attaches to the Velcro on the hood frame cover so that's included as standard. This is obviously the backing of the areas around the B post area, which you'd use some of the hood studs to secure into place. Same again around this channel here, reinforcement. Now you have this flap directly under the window here. That um, is used to wrap around the metal assembly bar that goes at the back of the car. Um, if I actually grab this original parts book here, it's this area here, basically. It wraps around those bars there and secures it into place at the back. Now, as mentioned, obviously the TR6 hoods had a zip, which you can clearly see now. So it allows you to zip everywhere apart from the bottom there and, and you'd secure that down onto the rear bulkhead. It would come into the car effectively. So it zips around there. And then just here, you have this flap here as well, which is sewn on, which again goes and secures onto the hood frame metalwork. Uh, I believe using pot rivers that's actually riveted in place um, onto the hood frame. So uh, that's basically the kit there. A few things to note on the TR6 hoods. Um, they're basically identical to the TR5 and TR250 hoods, barring the fact that the TR5 and TR250 did not have the zip set up uh, as standard. Uh, but apart from that, they're identical. It's also worth noting for the American market on the uh, outside edges up until the front, not including the header rail at the front, but all the other edges. Uh, a lot of the cars had a 
reflective silver uh, strip on them, uh, which was a legal requirement, I believe, back in the sort of 70s to allow cars to be seen a lot more clearly from the side on. So bear that in mind as well. Um, now the TR6, TR5s, etc., TR250s, the hood was a bit of a pain to fit, but actually once fitted was one of the uh, easiest hoods to erect and take back down again. So just bear that in mind. It's well worth the time spending, uh, making sure it's, it's fitted correctly because uh, once in use, it makes it much easier to work with. So one of the best designed hoods of the era, I would say based on our experience, that and probably the BJ7, BJ8s, the Heelys, which again, absolute pig's ear to actually fit properly. But once fitted properly, uh, really, really easy to use in terms of erecting and putting back down again. Bear that in mind. Uh, always happy to help in terms of fitment, both yourself and uh, professional trimmers if they are struggling. We've been making these hoods for donkey's ears. My father has a TR5 and has had multiple TR6s, so we are well versed in these particular hoods. Um, so we know they work well, but we're not saying it's a particularly easy process. So don't be afraid to ask for help. See our handbook for more details.